aloneness the ultimate in meditation the word aloneness is very beautiful it is ultimate in meditation it is transcendence from loneliness we know the word loneliness but we do not know the essence of the word aloneness there are two words loneliness and aloneness they appear to be same as far as their outer appearance is concerned however these are diametrically opposite to one another aloneness is total and complete if you try to make this word synthesis synthesis to do it it is composed of three words all oneness or two words all oneness when you encompass everything remember we are part of one harmony the plant is not separate from you it gets nourishment in the same way as you do the difference between a plant and you is level of consciousness man can be conscious and can be unconscious most of the time he remains unconscious and forgets that he is part of one he lives like a separate territory robinson crusoe this is mine that is yours mind has created many boundaries this is my resources this is my things that is yours when we understand that we are part of one harmony cosmic harmony we are again and again i give the example so that one day this example becomes part of your understanding and you live your life according to that understanding but it does not happen this is my money that is yours the jealousy the greed the anger the hatred all these continue to play the role and we never remain aware of this how much damage this causes to our inner civility and when you understand this yesterday i gave the example that when i got another car for my son i told him we will give this car to someone who is in need it has helped us for a long period of time he said no that we can sell it and get some money i said i am not going to do that and since the vehicle is in my name i am going to give it to someone who is in need let him because he cannot afford it you can afford it you got a new vehicle share it with someone else things like these happen on a day to day basis and when you talk about this but you these do not become part of your understanding then there is problem and you cannot feel the inner serenity and harmony aloneness is the outcome of meditation it is concerned with you loneliness is concerned with the other and is always concerned with the others aloneness is concerned with oneself it is the flowering of inner oneness harmony and meditation aloneness is the joy of being just you it is being joyous with you it means you are happy as you are you are enjoying your own company there are very few people who enjoy their own company the world is very strange here nobody enjoys his company 
everyone wants other to enjoy his company. Meditation is needed for one's own company. Without meditation, no one can cherish his company. That is why my emphasis is, I emphasize that aloneness is the ultimate in meditation, the ultimate yagi. Alone one feels disgusted with one. As a result, everyone seeks the other. And when others do not enjoy the company, you feel insulted and frustrated. The reality is, if you cannot enjoy your own company, who else is going to enjoy your company? Who else can be fulfilled in your company? First, you have to enjoy, cherish your own company, and then others will start cheering it. Again and again people ask, if I do not get bored staying alone in my room, not meeting with the people, I said, there is no need. I am the sum total of all. If I need to communicate with anyone, I can. And for that, I do not need the words, the energy field. And that is more than enough. If I have to send a message to someone and there is an openness in that person, the person will receive the message instantaneously. Just as when you send the message through cyberspace, through various apps that are available now on the phone, it reaches instantaneously. When you send a message on WhatsApp or any other app, it reaches to the other person instantaneously. You can imagine the speed with which the message of the Master reaches to the other. But for that, you can send a WhatsApp message to someone who does not have that app. Once the seekers have that app of intuition, listening to their own inner voice, they will be able to feel the vibrations, the energy, the message of the Masters. Aloneness is the joy overflowing for no reason. It is your nature. The very nature is to be happy or joyous. There is no need to depend on anyone else and there is no other motive in it. It is simply there. Just as water flows downwards, so too your being moves upward. Just give it a chance. Being requires solitude. And remember, again, solitude is not solitariness. Just as aloneness is not loneliness. Have you ever seen how does a seed blossoms? Seed is planted in the womb of the earth. It remains in the darkness all by itself, cherishing its aloneness. And then it begins to germinate and lo, one day it comes onto the surface. It has overflowed and then it continues to grow. First you have to learn to cherish your aloneness, then it will start germinating and sprouting and it will start becoming a big tree that can give shadow, that can give shelter to many. Only a state of no thought is pure, because then you are utterly yourself alone and there isn't anything interfering. No greed, no lust, no anger, no past, nothing is interfering. We do not forget 
the past events if the something has happened in the past we fail to establish a new communion with the person and that's where it becomes a problem we carry on the things in our heart like grudges against one another it does not affect anyone you can keep any amount of grudges against me it is going to harm you not me because i have forgiven you same time and now you cannot apologize to me either because much water has flowed the moment when a particular event or situation has happened that is no more there much water has flowed psychologist jean paul sartre says the other is hell and he is right in a way because whenever you are thinking of the other you are in hell and all thoughts are addressed to others when you are in a state of no thought you are alone and that is the purest state of being and in that aloneness happens all that is worth happening the seed blossoms the child grows whatsoever is precious and important happens in a state of aloneness holy prophet with the vyas all those masters nanak in a state of meditation aloneness all alone no one is there and in that he establishes a commune with the holy fills him and then as an overflow of that inner joy the scriptures messages comes when nanak disappeared in the river being for 3 years whenever someone attains to meditation he becomes useless for the society for the world at large it is not a literal that nanak disappeared in the river being or holy prophet these are the states of meditation the highest states when the outer world become oblivious of your presence there is no thought just oneness you are all alone enjoying the company like a madman but madness is falling below the mind and this is going beyond the mind a state of no mind there he experienced and the first word when nanak emerged out of that commune he said ek omkar satnam that which is is one the very nature of that energy is sound entire cosmos permeates with a sound that binds everything together we do not have ears to hear that sound of oneness and that is true and that is the only name in moses code when moses asked by what name you should be recognized he said i am that i am this will be my name and i'll be recognized by this name i am that i am this is a famous scriptural injunction tatto masi i am that i am and there are four basic statements aham brahmasmi i am ever expanding consciousness you are that you are there is similarity your aloneness is your essential being or the manifestation of god within meditation gives total freedom aloneness and flight of the alone to the alone there is no other 
The other is because of the boundaries of the body and mind. If you remove the boundaries, there is oneness. When you bought a piece of land, it was an empty. Then for the purpose of living, you have to create a structure with different rules. What is the difference between the space of this room and the other room? All space has the same quality. The only thing is this, each space is created for a specific purpose. You are a space, I am a space. You are created for a specific purpose, you developed for that specific purpose that has to be performed through you. But there are boundaries. I am male, I am female, I am American, I am Indian. I am Indian, you are African, third one is Chinese. These are only the outer appearances. Meditation means going beyond all this. You are going beyond that which will disappear and beyond which you need to go to reach to the center, to the inner core. Meditation implies being ecstatic in your aloneness. There is no other, there is no question of drowning yourself, but one hundred percent mindfulness will be needed Less than that will not do. When you become ecstatic in your aloneness, soon the ecstasy is so much that you cannot contain it. It starts overflowing you in myriad forms. And when it starts overflowing, it becomes love. Meditation allows love to happen and people who have not known meditation will never know what love is. For that you have to transcend for love to blossom in its purity that has the capacity to transform. You have to be beyond lust, greed, ego sense, anger, jealousy, the seven sins that Christians spoke of and five elements that Hindus have spoken of calm, lust, crowd, anger, mud, ego sense, loaf, greed, attachment, move, calm, crowd, mud, loaf, move. These have been described as robbers that constantly rob of our inner serenity. Meditation allows love to happen and people who have not known meditation will never know the nature of love. They may pretend that they love but they cannot. They will only pretend because they have nothing to give. They are not overflowing. You can be alone but that aloneness may not be true aloneness, it may only be loneliness at the core and you may be thinking and fantasizing about something which is not there and maybe of all kinds of things. Remember aloneness comes out of awareness, if there is no awareness you cannot, the seed of aloneness will not Prosper. It has nothing to do where you are in the outside world or where you are in the inner world. You can be in the marketplace or in a lonely place, but you are aware of it. There is awareness. Through aloneness, the ego is shattered. It has nothing to relate to. So it cannot exist. So if you are ready to be alone, totally alone, neither escaping nor falling back, 
just accepting the fact of aloneness as it is becomes a great opportunity. Then you are just like a seed that has much potential in it. But remember the seed must destroy itself for plant to grow. It must leave its outer shell. Seed in its awareness knows that I cannot grow unless I burst open the outer shell. But man does not want to leave the outer shell. Cannot understand the nature of a tortoise. It remains in the outer shell to protect itself from dangers. When it needs, it comes out of the outer shell and continues to do whatever is to be done like coming out from the center and reaching to the periphery to interact, but again goes back into its shell. Through aloneness, the ego is shattered. There is nothing to retain, nothing to relate to. It cannot exist. So if you are ready to be alone totally, alone neither as an escape nor falling back, just accepting the fact of aloneness as it is, there arises a great opportunity. Then you are just like a seed that has much potential hidden in its womb. And remember, just as the seed must destroy itself, the outer appearance, the outer shell, and only then the plant grows. Ego is a seed of potentiality. If it is shattered, the divine is born. Divine is neither I nor thou, it is one. Through aloneness you come to this oneness, to experience. Consciousness has come to the point now where you know that you are alone. And only in aloneness does enlightenment happen. The drop has severed all its relation with its source. It was part of the river. It is turbulent. The river was turbulent. The drop is separating from the river. It is now entering into a new zone, a state of the unknown. There is tremendous fear in the drop. If drop can speak and it narrates its own story, it is like the story of the person when he is on the verge of being enlightened. Buddha had explained in the book Beyond on enlightenment, I have narrated various states when different masters attain to the state of enlightenment, their experiences. The drop has severed all its relation with the river. It is all alone. For a moment it is turbulent. What will happen? Whether I will survive or not? And then it merges in the ocean. For a moment it loses itself. Next moment it emerges as ocean. One moment Jesus is a man, son of Mary and Joseph, doesn't know what is going to happen. And when you are in a state of awareness that death, that disappearance becomes Enlightenment, that becomes the ultimate in awakening and enlightenment is the ultimate in awakening. And I am not saying loneliness. The feeling of loneliness is the feeling that comes when one is escaping from aloneness or one is not ready to accept it. If you do not accept the fact of aloneness, then you will always feel lonely. Then you will find some crowd or some sort of intoxication to forget yourself. The first thing we must do is to accept aloneness as 
the only basic fact and to learn to live with it. We must not create any fictions around it. If you create fictions, you will never be able to know the truth that is. Fictions are projected, created, cultivated truths that prevent you from knowing what it is. It is for the purpose of entertainment. Live with the fact of your aloneness. If you can live with this fact, if there is no fiction between you and the fact, then the truth will be revealed to you. Every fact, if looked into deeply, reveals the truth in you. If you can become aware of your aloneness, then you become aware of the aloneness of others as well. Then you know that to try to possess another is trespassing the territory of the other. You must make a distinction between two words, lonely and alone. In the dictionary, they carry the same meaning, but those who have been meditating, they know the distinction. They are not same. They are as different as possible. Loneliness is an ugly and depressing state. It is sadness and the absence of the other. You would like the other to be there, but the other is not. And you feel and you miss them. You are not there in loneliness. The absence of the other is the cause of loneliness. Aloneness, loneliness is a negative state of affairs. Aloneness is totally different. You are there. It is your presence. The other is missing. It is a positive phenomenon. You do not miss the other. Instead, you meet yourself. Someone told me that I miss you. You do not, you are comparing unknowingly yourself with objects. You miss your pen. You miss your objects, but you do not miss the people. If you are really meditative, I do not miss you, because you are part of me, oneness. You have reduced the other to an object, so you say to your spouse, I miss you, and the spouse feels happy. And this has become a tradition. You do not miss the other, instead you meet yourself, and that is the greatest phenomena happening. When you are alone, existing like a peak, tremendously beautiful, sometimes you even feel a terror, but it has a beauty as well. But the presence is the basic thing. You are now present to yourself. You are not lonely. You are with yourself. <coughs> Alone, you are not lonely. You are with yourself. Lonely, you are simply lonely. There is no one. You are not with yourself and you are missing the other. Loneliness is negative. It is an absence. Aloneness is positive, it is a subtle presence. If you are alone, you grow, because there is a space to grow and nobody else to hamper. Obstruct or create more complex problems. Alone you grow, and as much as you want to grow, you can, because there is no limit. And you are happy simply being with yourself. Bliss arises then. There is no comparison because the other is not there. You are neither beautiful nor ugly, neither rich nor poor, neither this nor that, neither white nor black, neither man nor woman. 
Alone, how can you be a woman or a man? Lonely, you are a woman or a man because the other is missing. Alone, you are no one, empty, empty of the other completely. And remember, when other is not there, ego cannot exist. Ego exists only because of the other either present or absent. The other is needed for ego. To feel ego, the other is necessary. A boundary of the other. Fenced from the neighbors, I feel. I. When there is no neighbor, no fencing, how can you feel I? You will be there, but without any ego. Ego is a relationship, it exists only in relationship and relationships are like boundaries. Your house has its own boundaries, the two houses are separated from one another through boundary, through a friends. First move from things to thoughts and then from thoughts to thinker. Things belong to the world of science. Thoughts belong to the world of art. And thinker is the world of will. Just go on moving in words. The first circumference around you is that of things. The second is of thoughts. And the third is, is the center. Your being is nothing but consciousness. It is nothing but a witnessing. Drop things and go into thoughts. Then one day thoughts also have to be dropped. Then you are left alone in your purity. This purity is your aloneness. This purity is your aloneness. First, circumference is of things that surround you. Second is that of thoughts. And when you transcend these two layers, then you enter into the space that is your aloneness. In that aloneness is God. In that aloneness is liberation, moksha, enlightenment. In that aloneness is the taste of nirvana. In that aloneness, for the first time, you experience that which is within. Ordinarily, a man is alone, and so too is the woman. Loneliness is there. Even if you are attached to a man or a woman or a friend, it is only the attachment of lust. You will remain lonely. Have you not washed it? Attached to a woman or to a man, but still you remain lonely. Somewhere deep down there is no communication with the other. You are cut off like an island. Even dialogue seems to be impossible. Lovers ordinarily never talk to one another because each talk creates argument and each talk brings conflict. By and by they learn to be silent, somehow to avoid the other and at the most tolerate the other. But they remain lonely. Even if the other is there, but there is a space. The inner space remains unfulfilled. On the path of meditation, aloneness is sought, desired, hoped for and prayed for. Be alone, so much so that not even in your consciousness any shadow of the other moon. On the path of love, you can get so dissolved that only the other becomes real. That's the difference between path of meditation and the path of love. 
On the path of love, you get so dissolved that only the other becomes real and you become a shadow. And by and by, you completely disappear. In love, you disappear. And in meditation, the other disappears. You alone remain. On the path of love, God remains. You disappear. On the path of meditation, the reverse happens. God disappears, you appear. But the total and the ultimate result remains the same. A great synthesis happens. In fact, the mountain and valley are one. So are love and meditation. So are relationship and aloneness. The mountain of aloneness rises only in the valley of relationship. Remember the mountain of Aloneness rises only in the valley of relationship. In fact, you can enjoy aloneness only if you can enjoy relationship. It is the relationship that creates the need for aloneness. It is a rhythm. Aloneness makes you full. full. Love receives your gift. Love empties you so much so that you can become full again. Whenever you are emptied by love, aloneness is there to nourish you, to integrate you, and this is a rhythm. I have always been alone on the path. Even as a child, I used to cherish and guard my aloneness. And even today, Amidst the crowd, I am absolutely alone. Your being here does not make any difference. My aloneness remains untouched because aloneness is so intrinsic. Nobody can enter your aloneness. You can be in the crowd and absolutely alone. But you may be alone and not alone at all. You can sit in the cave in the Himalayan mountain and still think of the crowd of your girlfriend or boyfriend and the marketplace and what is going on there. You can think of all that. This is what people do when they escape to the monasteries, retreats, and ashrams, mountains. Aloneness is also one of the fundamental experiences as you enter silence. In silence, there is nobody else. You are simply alone. The deeper your silence will be, thoughts will disappear. Emotions will be no more. In the place of all this, there will be just pure beingness. A flame of light burning alone. One can get scared because we are so accustomed of living with people amidst the crowd and all kinds of relationships. You may not be aware that through all these relationships with friends, husbands, wives, children, with your parents, you are basically trying to avoid the experience of aloneness. These are the strategies so that you are always with someone. It is a well-known psychologically established fact that if a person is left alone in isolation, after seven days he starts talking as whispering. For seven days he can keep talking inside, keeps himself engaged in the mind. But then it becomes too much and things start coming out of his mind through his mouth and whispering begins. After 14 days, you can hear him clearly what he is saying. And after 21 days, he does not bother about anybody. He has gone insane.
Now he is talking to walls and pillars too. Hello friends, how are you? And this is true, not about somebody's passion. It is true about everyone. He is trying to find some relationship. If he cannot find it in reality, he will create an hallucination. Just stand by the side of the road and watch people going to and fro, and you will be surprised. They are alone amidst the crowd all around, and they are talking to themselves. They are making gestures as if telling somebody something, but the crowd around them is not related to them in any way. They are alone in the crowd, yet still they are talking. They are so much trying to create their own illusion. Maybe they are talking to their wives or their boss. There are many things which cannot be said, but right now they can say to them. In front of the wife, you, they cannot say it, but in this crowd where everybody is engaged in his own thing, they can certainly say things to their spouse. Nobody is listening and at least one thing is certain, the spouse is not there to listen to all that you are saying, but they need the wife or husband, at least someone to talk to. And after 30 days of isolation, a dramatic change happens. It is not only one-sided. Instead, it is that you are not talking to the pillar alone. The pillar starts talking to you as well. They do both things. First, hello, how are you? And then an answer comes from within, I am good, I am fine, doing well. They answer from the side of the pillar too, but in a different voice. Now they are created, they have created a world of their own, and they are no longer alone. No madman is alone. Either you are mad or not. If you do not know anything of aloneness, there is something of madness in you and that is there in almost everyone. Your pure aloneness gives you a clean sanity. You do not need the other, but the dependence on the other is no more there. You are enough unto yourself. Language is meaningless because language is the medium to relate with the other. The moment you are no longer dependent on the other, language is meaningless. Words are meaningless. In your silence, when there are no words, no language, nobody else is present and you are getting in tune with the existence. That state is the state of aloneness. This serenity, this serenity, this silence, this aloneness will bring you immense rewards. It will allow you to grow to your full potential. For the first time you will be an individual. For the first time you will have the touch and the taste of freedom and for the first time the immensity of existence will be yours with all its blissfulness. So whatsoever happens in silence, sadness or aloneness is good. In silence nothing wrong can ever happen. Whatsoever happens is going to enhance the beauty of it, deepen the charm of it. Anything that happens will bring more and more flowers, more and more fragrance of it. Loneliness is a negative state of mind. 
aloneness is positive. The existential meaning of these words always differ from that of the dictionary meaning. In dictionaries, both loneliness and aloneness are considered as synonyms. They are synonyms, but in life they are not. Loneliness is a state of mind when you are constantly missing the other. Aloneness is the state of mind when you are constantly delighted in yourself. Loneliness is miserable. Aloneness is blissful. Loneliness is always worried, missing something, hankering and desiring for something. Aloneness is a deep fulfillment and going, not going out. Tremendously content, happy and celebrating every moment as it comes. In loneliness, you are off the center. In aloneness, you are centered and deep-rooted. Aloneness is beautiful. It has elegance around it, a grace and a climate of tremendous fulfillment. Loneliness is beggarly. Beggarliness is all around it. There is begging and nothing else. It has no grace around it. In fact, it is ugly. Loneliness is dependence. Aloneness is sheer independence, sheer freedom. One feels as if one is the whole world. One is the whole existence overflowing with inner joy. That is why aloneness is the ultimate in meditation.